Okay, I am not a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I roll my eyes at the internet a lot. But there was something about that murder case in Boston that I just couldn't shake. And as it turns out, a lot of you feel the same way. Uh, it is the Karen Reed trial, a financial analyst and university professor who was hauled in and charged um, that she backed over her boyfriend outside a party and left him for dead in the snow. It's big. The police say that uh, pieces of her tail light were found at the scene, covered in her boyfriend's DNA. That's big. And all of that would be so compelling if it weren't for the pesky videotape that shows her tail light wasn't broken when she drove away from that snowbank. Oh, and there's the condition of her boyfriend, too, who is a cop. His injuries seem to tell a whole other tale. And it's a tale more consistent with a conspiracy theory. That the other cops inside the house party where he was dropped off may have actually beaten him to death and then framed Karen Reed for the murder. But don't ask me. Ask the victim. Because if you watch Forensic Files, or Quincy back in the day, <laughs> you know that dead men do tell tales. In fact, every injury on a dead man has its very own story. And that's where I bring in Joseph Scott Morgan. He is a certified death investigator, a forensic analyst, and a distinguished scholar at Jacksonville State University and a friend of the show. Okay, JSM, I got a whole list of stuff to go through um, regarding this poor victim's injuries. And I want you to just tell me whether they're consistent with the story the prosecutors um, say. Start with the SUV that uh, the prosecutors claim Karen Reed used to back into him, drive over him, and drive off, leaving him in the condition he was in. Do any of his injuries suggest that he was hit by a car? Well, he sustained uh, this blunt force trauma to his head. I suppose that that could, one of the things that we look for, Ashley, in pedestrian versus vehicle cases, or what are referred to as bumper marks. I haven't heard anybody mention this at all. Uh, we've got these insults to his arm. Uh, I've thought about this and thought about it. And really, you know, if he doesn't have bumper marks on his legs, which is where you commonly see them, the only posture I can really come up with that he would have been in would be almost in a seated position and kind of throwing your arm up like this and your head striking the ground because that appears to be a laceration and lacerations are not cuts. They're not incised injuries. That's blunt force trauma where you're striking a fixed object. Uh, and again, we don't truly have a descriptor yet. I, I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting to hear what the forensic pathologist has to say on stand. Okay, I'm going to go rapid fire through the next few, and let's just sort of dovetail off on that injury to the head. There is yeah. apparently a two-inch gash in his head, but the, the naysayers will say, well, hold on a second. There wasn't a lot of uh, blood at the scene, and he's got black eyes and a cut nose, but that two-inch gash, shouldn't that have bled out, like, a lot if he was hit that way? Uh, yeah, generally, and that is surprising, isn't it? Because most of the time uh, with head injuries, you bleed profusely. You know, even we have kids, actually. I know you do, I do. And if a kid gets his head split open, you see a lot of blood with that. And that is curious. I don't know if the cold impacted that or if perhaps it had occurred in another location, but there should have been a copious amount of blood at the scene, I would think. Yeah, I, I took my uh, one-year-old baby to, to the hospital. He'd cut his nose on the uh, the coffee yep. table. I looked like Carrie. I mean, I was head to... It, you're right. These head yeah, the injuries... Yeah, so are vascular. Just, yeah. yeah, okay. So the other thing, you, you mentioned that the, the injuries on his arm. The naysayers uh, say those look like dog bites um, and that there was a dog that was, uh, you know, homed in that house party. What mm -hmm. do you make of the marks on his arm? Well, they're linear, very linear. As a matter of fact, they have kind of a uniformed appearance to them. I've seen injuries that are similar to this in motor vehicle strikes what, that generally derive from the underside of the vehicle. But here's the problem. I'm not interested in those injuries on his arm. What I'm interested in are his clothing. I want to know what happened to the clothing because that's where the tail of the tape is truly going to be. If he went under that car, there's going to be road debris, grease, perhaps. And if, you know, this this dog incident, you would be able to recover perhaps some pet hair off of it. And let's assume that he was in the house and he was layered. It doesn't necessarily have to be on his jacket. It could be on an undershirt, perhaps. But we haven't heard anything mm -hmm. about the clothing. And 
for us in forensics and death investigation, the clothing is where we start. It's a layered investigation, literally. Okay, I have 30 seconds for two things. That's the taillight. Would backing into uh, a man smash the taillight? Because we've got a guy who's an expert who says he's called the Lexus company and they've said not a chance. And then on top of that, he's got, you know, injuries like a, a fight. He's got injuries on on his uh, hands. Yeah, first off, the taillight, it would, it's high impact plastic. You would need a significant strike. There would have to be uh, a, a good good amount of speed in order to accomplish that task, in my opinion. That's what I as thought. far as the hands, if those hands are fractured uh, in particular, uh, he may have been putting up a fight. Uh, but with the bruises on the hands, I would expect to see some kind of uh, scrapes or something like that in addition to the bruising on the hands, because that, that happens a lot as well. Yeah. Or maybe he got into a fight inside that house. Maybe the defense is right. Okay, Joseph Scott Morgan, thank you. I raced through that and I'm out of time, but I'm going to have you back. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ash. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.